Good evening, everybody. I will call our regular city council meeting to order of July 28th, 2020. Um, I'll ask everybody on the line to please um, un to put your camera on and turn yourself off of mute and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Um, and our next item is the open forum. Now I know we do have several comments, so um, I will just pass it to our staff to go over how folks can participate in the open forum and then start with the calls and um, reading of comments that were sent in. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I'm Kelly Wynn, I'm the assistant senior office or senior office assistant um, here at the city. And I do have a couple of comments um, as well as a, a, a line. I'm sorry, the phone line is open. So if you'd like to participate in the open forum, you can call 612-8106-51 and you'll be connected. Um, and then I can patch you through to the live meeting. But I will go forward with reading um, an open forum comment that I received. Uh, as a Richfield resident, I am very encouraged to hear that the city is hiring someone to specifically focus on equity. However, equity has become a frequently used word by many people and institutions, and often its meaning is extremely varied or lost completely. It is important to me that the city council clearly define equity in a way that is highly inclusive. To me, an equitable institution would consider the perspectives and needs of BIPOC, the LGBTQ plus community, as well as residents of different ages, abilities, and countries of origin. I hope the council will consider these complexities in the interview process for this new position, as well as the future work of the individual that is hired. Sincerely, Allegra Smyzik. Oh. <clears throat> Again, I will um, reiterate that the phone line is open for open forum comments. You can call 612. Eight six one zero six five one. Now, Kelly, can you say who the author was of that first reading letter? She wants to know the author of the letter. Uh, that was Allegra. I believe it's Smyzek, but I'm not totally sure on the pronunciation. Okay, sounds good. Do not have any calls yet. So if you'd like to continue, oh, talk too soon. Give me one moment. Who is that? Kelly Wynn. She is um, Katie's assistant who I've been talking to today. Just a quick note, Judy. Um, your you are your microphone is not muted. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our WebEx online life. <laughs> We've had all kinds of fun things happen. Oh. Human, human animals, little puppies and fish and all kinds of fun things. So just well, from from watching the legislature. I have heard um, roosters crowing, um, dogs barking, and toilets flushing. And that's and that's the state senate. Mayor, we do have uh, someone on the phone for oh. uh, for the forum comment. Great, thank you for putting them through. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if that was my cue or not. This is Lucy Wolfstone, and I live at Frazier Sheridan Court at 2500 West 66th Street. 
in Ridgefield. And I'm just calling to say um, thank you for honoring uh, disability, the disability community and um, the Americans with Disability Act. And just, I just ask that you'd uh, include everybody in your equity work, not just the disability community, but um, everyone. I sent in an email with my comments. So I think that'll be just be easier, but I just wanted to call and say, thank you for all of your good work. Thank you so much, Lucy, for taking the time to call in and to send us your email and for all the amazing work that you're doing in Richfield. Yep. All right. Thanks well, for calling. Back to the meeting. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Mayor, that was the only call I had, so you can move on if you would like. Okay, great. And then you have other comments to read, correct? That is all the comments for the oh. open forum. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So seeing as we have um, no other folks here for the open forum, we will move on to our next item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of the City Council work session of July 11th. 2020, the City Council work session of July 14th, 2020, and the City Council meeting of July 14th, 2020. So moved. Full second. Thank you. The minutes have been moved by Council Member Garcia and Council Member Supple. Um, City Analyst um, Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Yes, Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Troutman. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Wayland. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you very much. The minutes have been approved. So the next item is. Um, something we are all excited about, which is the proclamation to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act. Um, so we do have um, Tasha or Orstendorf, who is here from our Human Rights Commission. Hi, Tasha. Thank you so much for coming. And we also have Judy Moe um, from the Richfield Disabilities Advocacy Partnership, who is here to receive both um, Tasha and Judy are here to receive the proclamation and say a few words. And then I also know that there's several community members who wanted to share some comments and our staff did put that together and we'll be reading through all of that. So what I'll do is I'll read the proclamation first and then I'll ask Tasha and Judy if they'd like to spend a few minutes just sharing a little bit about the work going on in the community or anything that they would like to share regarding um, the proclamation and the Americans with Disability Act. And then our staff will read through um, the comments that our residents sent in support of the proclamation. So I will read the proclamation now. Um, whereas the American with Disabilities Act was passed 30 years ago on July 26, 1990 to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities and Whereas the city of Richfield affirms the principles of equality and inclusion for people with disabilities as embodied in the Americans with Disabilities Act and the laws of the state of Minnesota, including the Minnesota Human Rights Act. And whereas numerous organizations in Richfield and throughout Minnesota work with constituents and communities to expand the opportunities for Americans with disabilities by reducing barriers and changing perceptions and whereas the, the Richfield Human Rights Commission supported this proclamation at its June 2nd, 2020 meeting and recommended the Richfield City Council do the same. And now, therefore, I, Maria Regan Gonzalez, Mayor of Richfield, on behalf of the Richfield City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of July 2020 as Americans with, a Dis with Disabilities Awareness Month in the city of Richfield and call on the people of Richfield to observe this month with appropriate programs, activities, ceremonies, and to continue to support the civil rights of citizens with disabilities throughout the year. So here's the proclamation. We'll get a nice one signed um, and to you all. But I do wanna invite um, Judy and Tasha to say a few words. I know both of you prepared uh, something that you'd like to share on 
with this proclamation. So I don't know if one of you would like to go first. Sure, I can go first. Um, so my name is Tasha, um, as the mayor said. Um, so I am a member of the Richfield Human Rights Commission. I live on the east side of Richfield and I've lived here since 2016. And as a member of the Richfield Human Rights Commission, I just wanted to thank the mayor and the city council for recognizing this proclamation marking July as Americans with Disabilities Awareness Month in Richfield. And as you mentioned, although the ADA was passed over 30 years ago, there's still so much work to be done as there usually is with all of these issues. But um, the Human Rights Commission wanted to emphasize the work that really needs to be done still in the city with accessible housing, accessible transportation, all sorts of issues that we can continue to improve upon. So while we celebrate that Richfield has accomplished of everything so far that the city has done, we do continue to emphasize the ongoing effort that's needed to do even better by those with disabilities. So that's really the message that the Human Rights Commission wanted to share is partnering in celebration of this proclamation, but also emphasizing all of the work that still needs to continue to be done. So thank you all again for recognizing this proclamation. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, Tasha. Mm -hmm. Judy, would you like to share a few words? Sure, am I unmuted now? Yes, you are. Okay, um, is there a setting that would allow me to look at a bunch of you instead of just one yes if you go to the top right corner there's like these little white bubbles and there's one of four little squares if you like click over it you can see there's kind of one that looks like cards sort of or screens in a deck there's one it kind of shows the different cool. views of you finding it Is it like the green dot? No, the green, no, not the green dot. If you go um, kind of in the screen area where you can see people's oh, pictures. Yep, there's some white bubbles. If you put your cursor over there, you'll see one with four little boxes and that's kind of the like the Brady Bunch view. Oh, hi everybody. There we go, awesome. <laughs> Okay, well, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank uh, the mayor for recognizing the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act and for giving us the opportunity to speak to you um, as well as the council. I just wanna start by telling you a little bit about the ADA and how it came to be. <clears throat> The ADA, which is the largest civil rights bill ever passed, was signed into law by President George H. Bush on July 26, 1990. And not that that day wasn't amazing and everything, but I think it's important to also look back and give credit to all of the people who worked hard to get the bill passed. Uh, the ADA came about due to the many thousands of people who make up the disability rights movement, people who had worked for years organizing and attending protests, <clears throat> stuffing envelopes, sending out calls for action, drafting legislation, testifying, negotiating, lobbying, filing lawsuits, and even being arrested. Like the African Americans who sat in at segregated lunch counters and refused to move to the back of the bus, people with disabilities sat in federal buildings, obstructed the movement of inaccessible buses, and marched through the streets to protest injustice. The main principle of the ADA was to extend the existing basic civil rights protections that were extended to minorities and women uh, to people with disabilities as well. The ADA is really based on a basic presumption that people with disabilities are human beings and deserve the same human rights as everyone else. They were no longer going to tolerate exclusion and segregation. And that is really what RDAP's goal is uh, here in Richfield, to end exclusion and segregation in Richfield. Um, it is unfortunate that 30 years after the ADA, we are still fighting for basic human rights. 
uh, in the city, state, and the whole country. People with disabilities deserve and have the right to be a part of all fa facets of our community here in Richfield. Unfortunately, just like civil rights laws did not stop racism, the ADA hasn't stopped ableism. You know, I feel like I know all of you uh, council members and uh, mayor fairly well, and I want you to know that I do believe that you all sincerely want to work on equity and create change. And what RDAP members want you to know is that we support you in this work and we have your back. The city and the community needs to be on the same side. We need to be working together. We shouldn't have any us versus them type mentality. It is counterproductive and harmful at the very least. We know that change is uncomfortable for all of us. It is human nature to avoid change. It's kind of like your dad's big comfy chair that is falling apart and you try to get him to buy a new chair, but he's afraid that the new one won't be as comfortable as the old one. And even though the springs are sticking out and there's holes in it and everyone can see that it is past due to throw this comfy chair out and buy a new one, your dad is digging in his heels and doesn't want to change. The idea of something new is uncomfortable and stressful. I think it's mostly the fear of the unknown. We've never been here before, and most people would rather stay in a ratty chair that they think is comfortable because it's what they've always known, uh, rather than push themselves into that new chair that may feel stiff for a while until they get used to it. How did the suffragists get the vote? Through disruption and making a whole lot of people uncomfortable. How did the civil rights laws of the 1960s get passed? Through disruption and making a whole lot of people uncomfortable. How did the ADA get passed? Through disruption and making a whole lot of people uncomfortable. Uh, Frederick Douglass said, without struggle, there can be no progress. Um, Mayor, I don't know if you remember this, but when we first met, which was in July of 2018, after the first city council meeting we went to, um, I brought up to you that I had been told by people in the city that that's how we've always done it, as an excuse um, for not including, you know, being inclusive. And I remember that you said, that you didn't like that phrase, and that if everything had stayed the way it was, you wouldn't be where you are now. I took that to mean that you might not be a council member who is running for mayor. John F. Kennedy said, there are risks and costs to action, but they are far less than the long range risks of comfortable inaction. Listen, you guys all have a choice tonight you can go back to your life as usual, or you can humble yourselves and say, we haven't been doing as good of a job as we could have been, and we want to do better. And we want to commit to inclusivity and equity in the city. We want to commit to getting input from residents in the way that works for them and not the way that works for us. I know you all have good intentions, but now you need to turn those intentions into action. Tonight, RDAP is asking that the city come up with an action plan specifically for the disability community. We should not be invisible or be an afterthought. When I hear you all say over and over in meetings that you are making equity your number one priority, I want to shout, but you can't do it without the disability community. In closing, Benjamin Franklin said, Justice will not be served until those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are. Thanks again, Madam Mayor, for the proclamation and council members as well. Thank you for listening to us tonight and hopefully hearing us and seeing us. Thank you so much for that, Judy. That
That was really great. And I really appreciate the words that you shared. Um, and I know that you really thought hard about what you wanted to share with us. And I appreciate um, the request that you have passed to us about creating an action plan um, around equity that is inclusive of our of our disability community. Um, I know I open it up always for council members to respond as well and to kind of give uh, say any comments that they'd like. But I also know that we have additional comments from um, folks that have phoned in and emailed in. So what I'd like to do is pass it over um, to senior office analyst Kelly Wynn to read through that and then um, we can go to council and, and kind of give any reflections or feedback um, that they'd like. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I ask that you bear with me on some of the names and how I pronounce them. I'm going to do my best. Um, we did get over 15 um, emails and messages uh, that I've kind of combined, and I'm going to start reading through those so we can get through them. Um, my name is Lee Onazorch, <laughs> and I use a wheelchair full time. I have lived in Richfield for 30 years. That being said, we need many more zero threshold accessible housing, including bathroom showers. The ADA is not a suggestion for what we, the most vulnerable people, need for housing. I want Richfield to be an accessible community from all angles. We are only temporarily able-bodied. Anyone can become disabled at any time. We, the disability community, is part of Richfield and require a seat at the table when matters like this are in discussion. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Good evening. Please see below my comment for the meeting described. I'm a resident at Richfield in, of Richfield at 7228 Girard Avenue South. My name is Ricardo Perez. I am a resident of Richfield and I'm writing with two important issues. <clears throat> One. Please add people with disabilities, non-English speaking community, and GLBTQIA plus community in the, your efforts to learn about inclusive, inclusivity. In order for us to learn and adapt to serve the community that li lives in Richfield, we need to be inclusive in who and how we are reaching out to people with different capacities. Intentionally matters now more than ever. Uh, please show us with actions your intentions to be an inclusive city. Two, please continue your efforts in ensuring the community is able to participate in the decision making process in our city, especially when our tax dollars are being used to fund projects that impact all of us now and years to come. Please ensure you are doing everything possible to open a window for the community to communicate with you. Not doing so represents a big failure. The pandemic is not going away anytime soon. Please adapt and be innovative about how, where, and in what languages in which platforms you are allowing people to learn about your meetings and how actively and how to actively participate in them. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. Dear Mayor Reagan Gonzalez and council members, we understand that today a proclamation celebrating the month of July as the 30th anniversary of the passing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. We are writing in for the public forum today to show support for the disability community in our city and ask that you include all people in your equity work goals. This includes the GLBTQIA plus community, the disability community, seniors, non-English speakers, people of color, the indigenous community, and every other community that makes up our diverse city. It is imperative that it is made a priority in all of our cities. This one was actually <clears throat> written in by quite a few people. And I want to make sure. That was from Travis and Jerry Pladmark. I am writing to share appreciation for the proclamation taking place at tonight's meeting to mark the 30th anniversary of the Americans, Disabilities Act, Americans with Disabilities Act. This is a landmark piece of civil rights legislation and one that deserves recognition. 
True access and inclusion for people with disabilities is something we all need to keep working on and working for because the ADA is not a. I'm not sure. Um, this is true at the city level in our schools and in every aspect of our city. We all need to hold ourselves accountable for ensuring that we, when we set goals and report outcomes, people with disabilities are included and reflected in our work. We also need to pay special care to the ways in which disability powerfully intersects with race, class, language, and other identities and center in our efforts, the voices and power of those who experience this reality on a daily basis. <clears throat> a Supreme Court justice once said long ago that sunlight is the best of disinfectants, meaning that shining a light on injustice and disparities should theoretically lead to action and justice. Unfortunately, we all know that isn't always the case but I still think it's what we should be striving for. I appreciate those in our community who are leading these efforts and challenging us to be better and do better. Thank you for your time. Priscilla Brocky. This is from, um, I did kind of a blanket comment. Um, quite a few of the members of the community uh, wrote in with the same comment. So I kind of combined them all into one, but I'll also read all the members that uh, reported this comment. <clears throat> we understand that today is a proclamation celebrating the month of July as the 30th anniversary of passing the Americans with Disabilities Act. This includes the GLBTQIA plus community, the disability community, seniors, non-English speakers, people of color, the indigenous community, and every other community that makes us part a diverse city. It is imperative that it is made a priority in all areas of our city. The inclusive playground is fantastic, but policy must be inclusive as well. We love having neighbors who support each other, schools that foster growth, and a community that welcomes us all. Thank you, Mayor, for recognizing the 30th anniversary of the ADA. That was uh, put forth by Bonnie uh, Tor Tortorci, Caroline Martinez, Lisa and Jim Rudolph, Fabiola Martinez de Estrada, Christy and Joe Carr. Uh, Joe Carr is one that has an amazing lemonade stand every year that raises money for Gillette Children's. However, this year due to COVID, he had an unlemonade stand last week and was able to raise over $10,000 for Gillette, which was more than double last year's donation. This comment also included Kim Hooley and Linda Creer. <clears throat> Dear Mayor Reagan Gonzalez and council members, thank you for your upcoming celebration of the 30th anniversary of the passing of the American with Disabilities Act. As you know, for families and people living with disabilities, this was a monumentous and life-changing act. I am writing in for the public forum today asking that you extend your commitment to equity in our city to include an intersectional analysis, better capturing all people, most especially those who are living with disability, and who may also suffer in the intersections of race, class, gender, religion, sexual orientation, language, ethnicity, age, etc. It has been well established that the best way to understand how diversity plays out exper experientially is to look not only at a single categorical variable, but also at the intersections of these identifiers. I ask that this lens is at the center of your city's approach to problem solving around equity and inclusion. We have an incredible community and culture here in Richfield, and it is imperative that we ensure through, uh, uh, through accurate analysis that this culture is experienced by all who call Richfield home. Thank you, Mayor, for recognizing the 30th anniversary, the passing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. I look forward to witnessing how Richfield takes action. Sincerely, Michelle Nadelli. Dear Mayor and Council Members, thank you for recognizing the 30th anniversary of the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act with a proclamation to be presented at tonight's meeting. The passage of this act was a milestone achievement in the recognition of our fellow citizens who live with disabilities, and I believe it is important to 
rededicate ourselves to standing united with the disability community. Tonight's proclamation serves as a good reminder of our mission to stand in common purpose with the disability community. I ask that the city's future equity work goals recognize all people, including the disability community. The disability community is an important part of the rich diverse diversity of our city. In closing, thank you again for your recognition of the 30th anniversary of the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act. That was from Gordon Hansen. <clears throat> Dear Ms. Gonzalez, I want to thank you for the recognition of the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act. I can't think of a more deserving person than Judy Mo to receive this recognition on behalf of the disabled citizens of Richfield. Judy has been a wonderful resource and, a, and emotion support to many of us. I am a, long, a lifelong <coughs> resident. My dad's Minneapolis home was bought out by the airport and he was the very first graduating class of Richfield. I graduated in 1981, moved back to Richfield when I got married. Our son graduated from Richfield this year. After being misdiagnosed for 25 years, we realized that I had MS. Within two years, I had an MS episode that resulted in a stroke that weakened my right side and has now left me confined to a wheelchair. I met Judy three years ago after filing complaints on the way I was rudely treated multiple times by the Richfield EMTs, then denied everything my family said had happened. When I spoke to the fire chief, I reminded him that when people call them, they're at their most vulnerable and deserve their respect. Respect is fluid when you are a part of the disabled community. Am I going to be welcomed? Will I be judged by my disability? As a homeowner and taxpayer, you would hope that the access to your community is given, but not, many times is not. Our citizens each have their own strengths and challenges. A strong community respects those challenges, makes it safe and inclusive. When we make it inclusive for one, we make it possible for many to become involved. Please remember that not all disabilities are visible, but that does not make those citizens any less valuable. I love living in Richfield. Let's continue to grow and respect all who reside here. Sincerely, Jennifer Ott. <clears throat> Dear Mayor and Council Members, I am writing today regarding the 30th anniversary of the passing of the Americans with Disabilities Act. My wife and our son with disabilities moved into Richfield in 2010, and in the past 10 years, we have grown to love the city of Richfield for many reasons wonderful neighbors, opportunity for our son to participate in church as a volunteer with Sunday school and communion server, helping at PenFest and walking in the Richfield Urban Wildland Run Walk event as a fundraiser for the Richfield Historical Society. I have been an active advocate for disabilities <clears throat> for nearly 40 years at the Capitol as a 10-year board member and president of Park Minnesota and a member of the State Quality Council at the Department of Human Services. I'm also on the Institute of Community Integration Advisory Council at the University of Minnesota. This experience has helped me to understand the needs of people with disabilities and the achievements of the ADA over the past 30 years. Richfield has done a fine job of inclusion for the many groups who have been denied the opportunity to be included in the very day-to-day -day activities that help each of us have a quality of life. The job is not finished and we must actively work to help every person, persons with disabilities, non-English speakers, and people of color, the indigenous community, the GLBTQIA community, and every other member of the community that makes up our diverse city. <clears throat> During the past 30 years, the ADA has not only made walking on streets and getting into buildings easier, but it has disrupted the bias <clears throat> that marginalize disability communities for centuries. Thank you for your presentation to Judy Moe in recognition of the 30th anniversary of the ADA and for her long time work to improve and give a voice to people in the community who are unable to speak for themselves. Sincerely, Lester Bauer. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hello. I want to send kudos to our Judy Moe of the Richfield Disability Awareness Partnership Board. 
We are aware that the 1990 Americans with Disabilities Act had to be passed because the 1964 Civil, Civil Rights Act did not include the discriminating against people with disabilities. I am grateful for Judy Moe's work with RDAP. I know that I'm grateful for the efforts towards inclusion of everyone, which the Civil Rights Act, the ADA, and, the, and currently the demonstrations and protesters are making. It is all towards realizing and accepting that we are all out here on this ball <clears throat> in space called Earth together. And that each person, no matter how differently we look or walk or communicate, has equal worth and deserves to reach their full potential towards the best quality of life they have they can achieve, unimpended by their fellow man, woman, or child. I encourage us all to make efforts to accept the fact that we are one, we are all humankind. And we need you to care for one another's welfare, because when we each take our last breaths, leave the life in this body we are in and transition to the unknown, all that we really take with us is how we were treated and how we, how we treated each other. Thank you, and I hope that the recognition gives you some much needed wind beneath your wings, Judy and Mayor and really everybody. Stephanie Mockaby. <clears throat> To the Richfield City Council, thank you so much for recognizing the importance of the Americans with Disabilities Act as an invaluable tool that allows many people who would otherwise be excluded access to our community life. I appreciate that. I appreciate our city's devotion to meeting the city, to meeting the needs of all marginalized people, and to making the lives of our city citizens better every day. Sadly, many people do not realize that disability is an issue that crosses, crosses all social, political, racial, gender, and economic lines. It affects children and adults, as well as the families who love and care for them. What we want more than anything is for our families, all of us, to be included in the community life, community life we love here in Richfield. To that end, I would love to see Richfield make experience with the disability community a factor when choosing a candidate for the position the council is currently creating in order to promote equity. I'm sure all of you <clears throat> know that our disabled community is always at risk and that they are a vulnerable population, often overlooked when addressing a sea of inequity, all of which is important and should be rectified. My family, which includes children with disabilities, is so grateful for your ongoing concern, support, and dedication to our citizens. Thank you. Anne Flake. I have made it through our comments. <laughs> we do appreciate all of the comments that were sent in. I apologize if I missed any. Um, I did my best to compile all of them, though, and we do very much appreciate hearing from everyone. Absolutely. Thank you so much for putting those together and thank you for reading through every single one of them. It is so important to hear everybody's feedback and, and comments to us on something so important. Um, I did want to open it up and ask any council members if they had any comments that they wanted to share at this time. Mayor, I do. This is Garcia. Go ahead, Council Member Garcia. Uh, first, I want to I want to thank you, Mayor for um, allowing, um, you know, this to be, for allowing all those messages to get to us and taking the, uh, taking the time, because I know it took a while, but that, that is so very, very important. And I appreciate that you, that you allotted the time that you did to, uh, to hear the testimony. I also want to thank Kelly. She did a heck of a good job in re in in reading those, and uh, and you did, uh, and I appreciate that uh, that we had somebody read them because it really um, made it seem so real. Then I want I'd like to talk um, about Judy Mo. Now, Judy Mo, I think has been, you know, we we all all five all five of us know about. Disability Act, but do we really know about it? And the answer probably was no. But now that we've gotten to know and and we're friends with Judy, 
I think we can all thank her for being such a great mentor and such a great teacher in bringing us to the realization of exactly what the Disabilities Act is and does or doesn't do. Um, I just, uh, I'm, you know, Judy has emerged as a leader, not only in Richfield, but at, uh, in the state capitol. And in, in, in many, she's done many forums. She's done many um, uh, consultations. She's, she's just been everywhere. And I am extremely proud of her. Um, you know, the, the, um, the other thing is that oftentimes when we, you know, first when I used to see someone on a wheelchair or someone with a disability, you know, um, I didn't read, I saw them and I accepted that, but I didn't really understand what is, what is it that they're going through day after day? What is it that, what are, what are all the obstacles that they have to go through? What are all the, all, all the complications in their, in their well-being and their physical well-being and their, and their medical well-being? And what about, you know, uh, we don't know exactly what goes on every day because, but Judy knows because she lives with someone with disabilities. And Judy is, is got to be the best mom in the world. I, I, I salute her for, for being uh, positive and for being uh, always on top of, of everything. And just, I mean, she works really, really hard. Judy is a person that I really have enjoyed knowing, and I know and she's taught me a lot, and I look forward to working with her. And I just believe that when this uh, virus is over with, uh, one of the things we ought to do is have uh, our DAP and uh, um, do um, with, with the Advisory Board of Health do a, a town town meeting, an informational meeting, and and I think that the League of Women and Voters will sponsor it, as well as the Human Rights Commission, the Advisory Board of Health, the City Council, and other organizations, so we can have uh, resources there, and we can have um, um, and we can have providers there, and the whole works. But my heart is is just so proud of the fact that we're we're we are getting somewhere with this mayor and and i thank all of uh, uh, all of you for you know for going and listening and learning and and doing the best we can and we will continue to reach out and we will continue to do our best and judy say hi to my best friend raven Thank you, Council Member Garcia. Any other council members that would like to share comments? Council Member Supple? Oh, you're on mute. There we go. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, I wanna thank Tasha and Judy and all of the community members that contacted us and spoke um, for all of the um, information you shared with us and the feelings. And I really, really appreciate it because I know um, over the years, you guys have been advocates and a lot of things have started to change and we've got a long ways to go, but I wanna thank you for that advocacy. Um, there are questions now being asked about accessibility when we talk about housing. Um, people are talking about accessibility with transportation. Like if, if they're gonna redo the Portland Bridge, how are people gonna get across to the businesses on the other side of 494 and should we build be building bridges, like pedestrian bridges and things like that. And all of that discussion and the discussion of the playground that's coming on board at Augsburg Park. And that's because of that input from the community and that advocacy. And I just wanna thank everybody for that. And I also wanna say that, you know, a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. So I appreciate that people are speaking up and talking about the things that have to change. And we've already been hearing from a lot of people about ways that we could do more community engagement. So please keep all those ideas coming. 
And so it's just a heartfelt thank you to everybody. Thank you, Council Member Seppel. Other Council Members? Council Member Troutman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and uh, hey, Drew, I just wanted to say that um, there, there are a few things that I want to say, but um, on, on the one hand, I just want to thank you for your contributions to our community, your voice, your advocacy. Um, not only are they important, but they're just really effective. And I know there's so, and I don't want to compare the work that you've done and you've helped us to accomplish with the work that we still have yet to do and the work that we all still have to do as a community. But the moments like this are really important because it's just important to recognize not just the work that we have to do, but the work that you've done. And you've just done so much, not just on specific issues like the roundabouts and trimming hedges when you first came in and talked to us, but but you've just made people with disabilities, their lives, they're more present, more visible. Um, I think not just for the council, but for our staff. And um, you, of course, didn't do that alone. You did that with Raven, and you did that with Lee, and you did that with so many with with Lucy and so many of the people that wrote in and called in today. And so I know when you're recognizing this, you're you're standing in the shoes of lots of people from our disability community. And so I know you recognize that. I want to recognize that. I also want to just say thank you as as a friend, and um, and just say you like I appreciate your presence in my life uh, personally. And that means you don't, friendship doesn't mean you have to always say what we want to hear. It means the opposite, that you say what what we don't want to hear sometimes too, or maybe we weren't aware of and you don't. And so I just want to say very publicly that you still have, like you have all that space, not just to approach me or other council members in one way, um, and not just you, but everybody in the disability community, that there is space to just make your voice heard um, and I appreciate that you've you've done that with me and I appreciate our friendship. I appreciate your work. I'm so glad you're in our community and I'm glad we're honoring you and we're honoring the ADA. And um, so, so thanks a lot, friend. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. Council Member Whalen, are you there? Would you like to share anything? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to echo a lot of what others have said. Um, I also, a specific request um, is if we could, I, I was CC'd on a couple of the, the emails, but um, the assistant, when, if you are able to, um, if you're able to forward those to us, that I would really appreciate it. There were a couple specific um, suggestions or requests in there, and I think, um, I definitely want to repeat all of the thank yous that the other councils have, council members have said to everyone who spoke up. Um, I know that these words are not just representative of a single email, but of whole stories, whole life experiences, and a lot of work that's already gone into things um, that others have mentioned. But I think, uh, as council member Troutman was saying, um, there's work for us to do too. And I, what I heard specifically um, was that request for an action plan specifically on how we as a city relate to and serve people with disabilities to make sure that they are included. Um, and then also uh, a couple different specific requests about our equity coordinator position. And I think, um, I think we're, it's not totally set in stone, but I think we're pretty, uh, pretty much on the same page that that needs to be part of next year's budget and we're ready to move forward on that. Um, and so I think now is the time to start talking more specifically about what that what that position looks like and um, what the, the plan is. And so certainly working with staff and continuing to um, take into account the feedback we're hearing from the community on what what that should look like and making sure that that includes um, people with disabilities as well as all of the other marginalized groups that um, several people brought up. And so I, I just want to thank um, uh, thank you for for everything, but specifically uh, thank you to to RDAP for doing the work to invite into the process people who we we definitely need to be hearing from more and inviting in more and making sure that our process is uh, fully welcoming and inclusive for. And so I I appreciate the work that's been done and look forward to to more. And hope that uh, hope that we can start 
getting it right more often uh, without needing the reminders, but appreciate those when they're needed um, and look forward to, to the work that we can do together um, in the future. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Um, and without repeating, you know, a lot of the sentiments that, that as Council Member Whalen said, as um, that I share with our whole council that they just expressed today, um, I just want to lift up two things in addition to everything that has been said. It's just been such an honor and such a gift and so impactful to to grow my leadership and to grow um, and to see the leadership grow of our community, especially so many community members with disabilities that our DEP has really grown and cultivated, um, encouraging people to attend meetings, encouraging people to face their fear of public speaking, encouraging people to speak up and build relationships. Um, it, it has just been so great. And this is such a huge asset in our city. Um, and it just speaks to the importance of continuously working together. It's not just on the city staff. It's not just on the council members. It's not just on RDAP. It's not just on Judy Mo. It's on our whole community to really work together. Um, and we need to keep building that community infrastructure. And I really do appreciate the work that Judy, Raven, and all the folks from RDAP have been doing to build that infrastructure. And um, this is just a great example. And um, that highlights, you know, these proclamations are not things that we do just to put them out there and um, to to acknowledge a date, but it is actually to to build community, to build that infrastructure, and to think about how we can work together. Um, so I just want to keep encouraging everybody that these kind of changes will con will require nothing less than you know nothing nothing short of that partnership between our residents, the people most impacted, the policymakers, the staff, and our organizations. Um, so thank you for all the contributions that RDAP is doing and all the residents in building that community infrastructure. And we're really well poised with this equity coordinator, with where we are um, in our city today to really move some great work forward. And I really do look forward to, to carrying this out together. We do have a lot of work to do. So. Thank you for the two of you for coming and receiving the proclamation and thank you to all the residents who shared their comments with us um, that would be great if staff could please share that with everybody um, so we can continue to get harvest those ideas build those relationships and keep moving forward together. Thank you Tasha and Judy for for coming. The next item on our agenda will be the is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Council Member Whalen, so moved. Seconded, Council Member Troutman. Thank you. The agenda has been moved by Council Member Whalen and seconded by Council Member Troutman. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Stuffel. Aye. Council Member Troutman. Council Member Garcia? Please. Council Member Aye. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. The agenda has been approved. The next item is a consent calendar, which goes to City Manager Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. The consent calendar contains several separate items, which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and recommended actions have also been approved. No further council action on these items is necessary. We only have one item on the consent calendar tonight. The item is cancel the public hearing to consider the platting and vacation of easements at 6228 Penn Avenue South and 6200 Queen Avenue South, Lunds Byerleys. I can set, I can submit the consent calendar for your consideration. Mayor Garcia here. I will move the consent calendar. Council member Supple, I'll second. Thank you. The consent calendar has been moved by council member Garcia and seconded by council member Supple. Um, are there any council member questions or comments on the consent calendar? Great. 
Seeing that there is none, um, I will ask analyst Martinez Gavinia to please take the roll call vote. Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. The consent calendar has been approved. The next item will go to Council Member Troutman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this uh, this item is uh, the consideration of the approval of the second reading of an ordinance amending subsection 210.01 of the city code related to the city council salaries. And chapter two, section 210 of the city code establishes the salaries of the city council and subsection 210.01 subdivision five provides that salaries of the council members shall be reviewed by the city council by May each year in which the election is held pursuant to section 200 of the code. An ordinance amending the salaries established by this section must not take effect until after the next succeeding municipal election. And in 2018, the ordinance change was consistent with past practices. The city council salary increase was based on the increase granted by the employees at the management and general services pay plan in the previous year. In 2018, the city council approved an ordinance for salary adjustments that were lesser than 3.5% of the percentage increase in the annual pay structure granted in January 1, 2018 and January 1, 2019 to the management and general services pay plans. Actual annual salary increases for the Marin City Council were 3% each year based on management and general services pay plans. Effective January 1, 2019 and January 1, 2020, respectively. The city has had a 30 year history of providing the same cost of living increases to all its employee groups within four of the five union contracts, having settled uh, for 2021 at a 3% increase. The staff anticipate a 3% adjustment uh, to be recommended for the non represented employees for 2021. And the past council has also reviewed their salaries compared to other metropolitan areas. We have attached the information on other metropolitan cities' salaries. On June 23rd of 2020, the city council reviewed the comparable city council salaries and the city's past practices in setting future salaries during a work session. The majority of city council expressed their desire to maintain the city council salaries at the same rate, a 0% increase in 2001 due to the financial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. They also directed staff to provide an economic trigger in the ordinance for 2022 that would set the increase to zero if the economy has not improved or set the salary increase based on what is granted to employees in the management and general services pay plan in the previous year, 2021. The attached ordinance provides for a 0% increase for 2021 and a 0% increase in 2022 if the National Bureau of Economic Research finds the economy is in recession. It also includes that if the NBER finds the economy is not in recession, then the salary increase would match the increase granted to the management and general services pay plans for the previous year of 2021. Um, so that um, that being said, um, I, I would um, uh, we would uh, move the move. I would move that we approve the second reading of the ordinance amending subsection 210.01 of the city code related to the city council salaries. Council member Whalen, I'll second. Okay, um, the motion was made by council member Troutman and seconded by council member Whalen. Are there any council questions, comments, or discussions on this one? Nope. All right, seeing none, then um, analyst Martinez Govinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez? Aye. Council member Stoffel? Aye. Council member Troutman? Aye. Council member Garcia. Aye. Council member Whalen. Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. The motion is approved. The next item will go to council member Supple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This item is to consider the approval of the preliminary design layout of 65th Street from Nicolette Avenue 
to 66th Street slash Ray Drive, including the Lindale Avenue pedestrian, pedestrian improvements between 64th Street and 66th Street as recommended by the Transportation Commission, and a contract not to exceed $439,804 with Kimley Horn and Associates Incorporated for final design engineering of the 65th Street reconstruction project between Nicollet Avenue and 66th Street slash Ray Drive, including the Lindale Avenue pedestrian improvements between 64th Street and 66th Street. The purpose of this reconstruction is because the pavement and the underground infrastructure condition along 65th Street continues to deteriorate. City staff have identified a need to complete reconstruction of the roadway in the 65th Street corridor between Nicollet Avenue and 66th Street slash Ray Drive. The reconstruction also allows for the release of a utility easement across the hub property. Infrastructure improvements along Lindale Avenue between 64th Street and 66th Street are recommended due to recent and future redevelopment in the area. And a long-term flood control solution is needed in advance of the hub redevelopment and will be included as part of the 65th Street reconstruction. The project was reviewed by the Transportation Commission at many meetings, along with public review and comment from five open houses and input from several business meetings. The first three open houses in 2019 were focused on phase one of the project, and the last two included the full project extents. The last two open houses in 2020 were virtual open houses due to COVID-19 guidelines. All open house recaps and comments can be found at www.richfieldsweetstreets.org slash learn. So consistent with the city council direction, the capital improvement plan and the city's comprehensive plan, staff has prepared a preliminary design for the reconstruction of 65th Street between Nicollet Avenue and 66th Street slash Ray Drive and improvements along Lindale Avenue between 64th Street and 66th Street. At the June 10th Transportation Commission meeting, the commission recommended this preliminary design along with further study of several, de several detailed design elements that are with a split five to four vote. The three things that they want people to look at and um, transportation engineer bros will talk more about this later in the staff report were the 65th Street Hillsbury Avenue intersection, including access to 65th Street from the hub and reopening of Pillsbury Avenue to two-way traffic, medians in the area and eastward and other traffic calming measures, potentially closing the southbound Lindale Avenue access to Wendy's closest to the proposed roundabout or identification of other assurances and mitigation in the area to ensure safe vehicle and pedestrian interaction interactions and widening the trail along the north side of 65th Street while avoiding park and other property impacts. So the preliminary design needs to be improved in order to begin and complete the final design engineering of the project. And as it, sta as it stands, the project is slated for 2022 construction timeline, but the staff believes it's important that the city is ready for a 2021 construction timeline if needed due to adjacent redevelopment projects. The estimated cost of the project is approximately $9 million. The cost includes the replacement of city utilities and flood control improvements, and it's financed by $7,800,000 of street recon reconstruction bonds and $1,200,000 in utility bonds. Um, there were some community members who called in for comment so I would like um, um, Assistant Wynn to please read those, and then we'll turn it over to um, Traffic Engineer Jack Rose. Thank you, Councilmember Seppo. I do have a couple comments, and I also have a couple voicemails that we'll listen to as well. Hello, I live at 64th and Pillsbury. I strongly, strongly object to changing the intersection at 65 Pillsbury to a two-way street. It would be entirely unfair to the street bear the burden of all in and out traffic for this side of the neighborhood. We already have much higher traffic due to our street being the only west access for all the, for all the apartment buildings 
Additionally, we have no four way stops on Pillsbury or 64th, making every intersection significantly less safe than others around. If you're going to expand outlets, please expand on a different street. We have so many children on this block, not just from single family homes, but from the apartment buildings as well. Right now, all of these children have a relatively safe and <clears throat> enclosed area to bike and explore without a huge threat from traffic. During the school year, dozens walk up and down 64th to their bus stops every morning and night, and the large majority of them come from uh, come from or cross Pillsbury to do so. I am telling you, this intersection is already the sketchiest part of an elementary kid's daily travels. I've lived here for nine years and my taxes go up every single year, about 4,000 this year. That's more than $300 a month, pretty high for a single working mother. But I pay that without objection to help preserve and service the community of Richfield. I love my neighborhood, my town, and my street. I believe my voice should be should matter in these decisions. I object to our tax money being used to bring even more traffic to our street. Please don't hurt the character of our neighborhood. Thank you. Amanda Vetch at 6332 Pillsbury Avenue. <clears throat> I'm writing you to express my extreme disappointment and objection to the plans that are being considered for Pillsbury Avenue. I have included the two officials from the letter that was sent and also Ms. Garcia as our direct council person and Ms. Reagan as our mayor. I'm including the other council people as well to ensure that our neighborhood's stance and objections, especially those on the block most affected by this proposal are accurately conveyed. First, I feel deceived. At the, block, at the last block party, not even 365 days ago, we were assured that this issue would not even be considered for two to three years. Yet here we are 11 months later, the commission has made recommendations and you loop the residents of this area in at the 11th hour. My biz biggest objection to this change is that there literally is no reason for it. This area is not a destination to which those not going to or from a home here need additional access points. What it does is destroy a neighborhood by adding into the mix of homes and children playing and neighbor, neighbors creating the urban hometown, a bunch of impatient drivers looking for a quick way around the mess made by our streets by reducing everything to one lane and unused bike lanes. On the block that you are considering making this change, there are 15 children. That's 15 bottles that can inadvertently bounce into the street or children who are learning to ride their bikes having to dodge impatient drivers without any business to be in the neighborhood except that they are looking for a way to zip through down en route to somewhere else. By and large, not considering whose lives there, who lives there and <clears throat> what to encounter because they are set on just getting somewhere else. I have heard it argued that it alleviates traffic on Pleasant, the one-way street to the west of Pillsbury. Yet there is nothing to suggest that traffic on that street is a result of people heading to their home in this neighborhood. Any traffic is just as likely, if not more so, to be from the 12 plus apartment buildings that reside on that street and those residents using Pleasant to access their own homes. When you consider that each building has a minimum of 12 units, if even half of the residents have a vehicle that comes and goes two times a day, once leaving and once returning, that is quite a bit of traffic. At a conservative estimate, that is, this is 288 car encounters per day. Legitimate traffic that opening up Pillsbury does not alleviate. What did the study that you do or that you did on the traffic there show? What did the study that you did on Pillsbury traffic show? I've also heard it argued that this used to be a two-way street and the taxes also used to be a lot lower. Are we rolling those back too? It's a ridiculous argument at best because it doesn't consider that it was closed off for a reason because it's not a destination that needs to accommodate traffic coming and going from multiple points. It's a neighborhood, an urban hometown that deserves to be protected by those representing it. I know that this is council that this council has been at odds with the neighborhood for some time over the gar garage issue. Do not th let that cloud your judgment 
and doing what is right in rejecting this proposal. It does not serve this neighborhood and only stands to make Richfield residents less safe by knowingly rerouting inpatient traffic heading somewhere else through a 100% residential neighborhood pocket. Respectfully, Ginny Morin at 6415 Pillsbury Avenue South. And <clears throat> I do have a couple voicemails. Yes, this is William Buttall, 6401 Wentworth Avenue South, Richfield. Uh, telephone 612-866-1415. I do totally approve of your final plan about leaving Wentworth and Blaisdell alone and converting Hill Street. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I would like to make one other comment about 66th Street. I don't know why that wasn't made two lanes both ways all the way. Uh, the single lane traffic on 66th Street from the Cedar Freeway back to, I believe it's Nicollet Avenue or Dale, and one lane traffic on a bus line uh, makes no sense. Uh, buses stop and cars back up. Yep, we took up all that space for bike lanes that nobody uses. Uh, there, there's not 10 bikes a day that go up and down there. There's 10,000 cars. The comparison isn't even close. Why don't we have a bus lane on 67th Street? Uh, that's my comment. Thank you. And I do have one more. <clears throat> Hi, Kelly. This is Catherine Eckleberry, and my phone number is 612-798-0121. I live on uh, 6409 Pillsbury Avenue, South and Richfield, and um, I'm calling regarding the, uh, the meeting that you have today to consider the Transportation Commission's recommendation to open up Pillsbury Avenue into a two-way street. Um, we have a large family. We have six children, and they bike up and down that street into the circle and back. And um, we have small children. They all range in age. Um, I absolutely do not want to see that opened up into a two-way. There's, there's absolutely no reason to do so. Everybody um, is just fine getting out. Um, the way it is set up, it's, I think it's a waste of money, but also it's a big safety issue. Um, I'm not the only uh, household, my husband and I, we have six children. We're not the only household with children on this street. There's, let's see here, three <clears throat> three other homes with children, um, actually four, but one of them's a teenager, um, but with small children. So, and and they do like to bike. I know another family likes to bike up and down there. And um, this is not a good idea. It is not not at all. So I would really like this stopped. Um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Thank you. Bye. And that is what I have for comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, transportation engineer Bros, do you have information for us? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Jack Bros. I'm the transportation engineer for the city of Richfield. Um, I'm going to share my screen and do a uh, presentation overview of the uh, project. Uh, so this is our next um, Sweet Street project. As you've heard it described already, it's uh, 65th Street is a full reconstruction shown here in orange um, from the west side over by 66th Street, right all the way to Nicollet. And then there's bicycle restriping improvements on Lindale. Uh, important to Sweet Streets is our design process, which is a blend of technical analysis, outreach, um, input from uh, the community through our outreach program, and the structure with the Transportation Commission review. It, in 2013, we established a uh, 50 year visioning process. Uh, these are the guiding principles for our transportation projects. Uh, they're put together in a rank order. 
And this particular project, the top three were very important as our considerations for multimodal design, the connectivity in the public realm with things like um, Richfield Lake and uh, the local economy. And you heard um, there's the hub potential redevelopment and um, near near Lindell, uh, there's multiple redevelopments. So this is a, a, our guiding principles that we um, go and use through our process to make sure we understand the right things because this street will go on for the next 50 years. Um, as mentioned, we had five open houses, many transportation commission meetings and meetings along the way uh, with businesses and residents along the corridor. So the problem, what we heard, pedestrian concerns or safety and accessibility, uh, mm -hmm. sidewalk gaps, uh, you see in this photo, uh, there's no sidewalk in the area just right in here. Uh, sidewalk gaps and the conditions of the sidewalks are very poor uh, and the crossings are very challenging of 65th Street and Lindale. Uh, there's also concerns of the speeding that occurs on both Lindale and 65th Street. Uh, the bicyclist concerns um, specifically was the lack of facilities along the 65th Street corridor and Lindell. Motorist concerns, um, the signal operations at uh, Lindell and 65th Street create a, a delay, especially now with the uh, more efficient operations at Lindell and 66th Street, the roundabout. Um, and there's always concerns people express about three lane operations, uh, I think is one of those comments just expressed. Um, general concerns along the corridor included uh, the corridor's appearance and uh, the, the need for additional parking in this part of the city of Richfield. The next step we do is we take that problem and we try to put measures that we think would address some of those concerns. Um, starting with equity, one of the things we heard, and we wrote a, a measure here to reduce traffic on Pleasant Avenue. So that's a one way in for everyone in that neighborhood between Nicollet, the railroad, 65th and, and the Crosstown. So reducing traffic on that street where all those apartments are uh, was one of our measures. Pedestrian uh, to improve the experience across and along the streets. Recreational biking and the check marks, by the way, we feel we've been able to address those, at least in some degree. Recreational biking uh, provides space comfortable for recreational biking. Uh, commuter bicycling, you don't see a check mark here because in the process there was a lot of discussion about the adequate facility one block over on 66th Street. And so the need to do it a parallel route on 65th Street for commuter bicycling, uh, the higher type design feature was not considered uh, in the long run, something that fit into our design. Uh, vehicle measures provide left turn lanes for safety, reduce speeds, and reduce the waiting or delay uh, along the corridor. The environment, uh, add green space with our goal. Winter maintenance to add room for snow storage. Businesses, uh, primary goal was to add parking on street in this area. And for residents, improve access to the neighborhood. So the features that we brought to the design um, in, in this project, you can see here we've added a trail along the north side. This is by Richfield Lake. Um, we add medians for better crossings of median refuge, like we've done on our other streets. We're adding a continuous sidewalk along the south side, which doesn't exist for much of the corridor today. So there'll be a trail on the north side, si sidewalk on the south side. In general, this also improves our crossing distances. Uh, crosswalk visibility can be improved for pavement markings, the signage. Uh, and flashing lights like our other corridors. We've been able to increase the offset to traffic with pedestrian paths, improve shading and lighting along the corridor. 
bicycling. Uh, we put a trail on 65th Street on the north side, um, but on Lindale, we are going to make that conversion from four to th three lanes. Uh, in the inside here, you can see that that also allows for parking in on the outside with bike lanes and the two travel lanes with a left turn lane. So we have uh, quite a few improvements in the segment of Lindale with the restriping. And for vehicles, the primary reducing speeds and reducing delay, we do propose a roundabout uh, similar to the roundabouts uh, south of 66th Street. So the 68th, uh, 70th, and uh, 67th Street roundabouts, a smaller version. Um, we're proposing a similar roundabout at 65th Street in Lindale. And now how we all roll this up together. Uh, this segment of the layout, you can see um, we have multiple crosswalks that we're proposing into the park. Uh, it's a two lane street parking on both sides with the roundabout at Lindale. As we move further east between Lindale to Pillsbury, we go from the roundabout, we continue a two lane street in this segment, we upgrade the railroad crossing. Um, as talked, we are proposing to put in a two way connection to Pillsbury, which aligns with the new connection to the hub. So there'll be a coordination with hub to close driveways and consolidate to this corridor alignment, which is also the utility line. Um, Pleasant will remain as is with the one way into the neighborhood. The final segment of 65th Street, uh, this would become a three lane section with the planted medians, uh, crosswalks, and again, coordination with the hubs and get the utilities coordinated uh, so that they're no longer in the hub property. Also mentioned was the flood improvement. There is uh, flooding in this area that would be very problematic for a redevelopment of the hub. And there would be part of this project is to then install a pipe that would take it to Richfield Lake and uh, eliminate that potential flooding in the future for that redevelopment. So upon approval, um, if you so decide, our next steps would be um, in detailed design, we contact all the adjacent property owners and discuss uh, construction timing and any property impacts that might occur. Uh, we, we will complete those detailed studies per the commission's recommendation. Uh, each of these is more of a detailed design versus a functional change. So for example, the trail is going to be either eight feet or 10 feet. Um, we'll be cautious about widening the trail and creating impacts. If we can widen the trail without significant impacts, for example, trees uh, around Richfield Lake, um, we would we would make that recommendation. And all of these, what we'll do is we'll come back with an update to council and the transportation commission to know how these detailed studies uh, worked out. Uh, access to Wendy's was raised, and similar, the Pillsbury Hub intersection geometry. Uh, I know there's also concern the neighborhood has about cut through traffic, uh, leaving the hub and going through the neighborhood. So those are kind of details that we will be working um, through and providing updates. Uh, we will also finalize the stormwater improvements as, as designed, as proposed. And we anticipate then with the schedule, the council approval, we'd come back with the final design during this coming winter. And after that, uh, we would get bids and uh, we would bring you a, uh, for award, approval of the award uh, for during the 21 winter with construction season in 22. So that's my presentation. I don't know if there's any questions. Are there questions from council members on the presentation? No, doesn't look like it.
I guess there, there is a question that I have. Um, can you talk about the traffic mitigation that is that we would be looking at to open up Pillsbury um, and the concerns that the neighbors do have of the traffic from the hub going directly into the neighborhood? I'm sorry, I just close a picture. Um, specifically, the intersection, if you're leaving the hub, the intersection will preclude anybody going straight north. So picture that you have to turn left or right. You can't go straight at 65th Street. So our engineering will make sure you can't make that maneuver um, as a beginning point. So that, that should be precluded by the intersection design. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, Council Member Troutman. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Um, great presentation, as always. Um, I, I wondered if, just with reference to to the neighbors saying that there there's no need um, for for changing that one way, if you could just take just a, a moment to just speak to those neighbors' concerns and and share why. Why we think that might be needful or beneficial? Well, we we looked at the existing condition, um, and so all of the people for all four of those streets, the only access into that neighborhood is to go up on Pleasant. Um, so our goal, with with that in mind, and and that really being an equity issue with the the, the renters versus the single family homes, um, because some of those homes live on a cul-de-sac street and then Pillsbury has a one way tra traffic from 65th street. Then it turns into two way after that. Uh, but it's a narrow one way street for all of those people to go past those apartment buildings to get into their neighborhood. Um, and so that was the, the equity concern we had. And so we looked at a quick study of opening all the streets. We looked at opening any one of the streets and uh, through our early, you know, we had, like I said, those five open houses. We did get a lot of feedback on all, this, all of those scenarios. Um, if we did not make the recommendation, we would not be improving at all the equity uh, that we believe we can make. We think it's the yeah. right thing to do. So that's why we've proposed it. And we know there's, there's a change for the amount of traffic, but we're trying to minimize or eliminate the cut through from the hub in what we're proposing. So it's, it is a trade-off, but we think it's the right thing to do to address the equity and give that neighborhood two options to go into the neighborhood, not just the one. Thank you. Other comments or questions from council member? Council member Seppel. Can you talk a little more about the timeline? I know there have been concerns about the flooding are we going to be starting to remedy that as the first part of the project or what are we going to do with regard to the, the water, storm water and stuff? Can I ask direct Asher to respond? Sure, Jack. Um, Mayor and Council members. Yeah, we the storm water portion would go alongside the road reconstruction. There may be um we have to really work with, with the hub because whatever happens whether the road construction goes ahead of the hub or the then we would put the pipe in and wait for that hub piece to to connect to it but we'd have to have the whole thing designed across the hub so we're working with them on the stormwater design it's a separate but parallel track um and we will tell the 65th street designers what they need to design around as far as the stormwater that will be included in that construction so it'll be on the same time frame, but in multiple pieces with the hub, if that makes sense. Do you want to follow up that it will also include some planning for Richfield Lake in that area as well? Yes, that's what we're starting to do right now. Council member is engage in that conversation. What what impacts will we have at Richfield Lake just to get the pipe? the lake and then what can we how can we enhance that entrance to the lake and um, possibly 
even do some of the wayfinding that's been talked about in previous years that we can maybe include in this project as well in the area. Thank you. Any additional questions from council members? Uh, council member Whalen here. I think to piggyback on council member Supple's question, I think all of the things Director Asher that you just shared are really important. I think there's also been community concern about flooding in Richfield Lake, that the water there gets pretty high sometimes. And so I, I guess I'm curious if it is also being, whether we have an answer now or are committed to finding one before construction happens in two years, um, about making sure that the additional pipe going into the lake, um, that there's a way for that, a place for that water to go so that we're not just adding to the water that's ending up there. Uh, sure, Councilmember Whalen, that's a good question. Uh, to clarify, we are looking at the previous design that we did with Rich Hill Lake. So we have that design um, memo and we're sharing it with the current our designer. Uh, the water that we're just kind of planning for the future, but the water that we're talking about, it floods in like 66th Street in the hub now. And that Richfield Lake is just going to get there sooner. So we have, if it if the rainfall events didn't intensify in the future, we wouldn't see really a difference in the flooding that occurs there now and the, the water levels at Richfield Lake. It would just happen sooner. Um, and then it flows to Wood Lake. So I think some of the problems is that we get um, some buildup of, of um, sticks and stuff in front of that outlet to Wood Lake. And then it needs to be cleared regularly, regularly maintenance. And we'll look at making a better design for that. So maybe we can eliminate that from happening. Um, but when the rainfall events intensify, we're looking at all those scenarios right now. So we hopefully can improve the design of Richfield Lake. We it wouldn't get any worse is the short answer than what we see today. We're not gonna we're not going to exas exacerbate a problem at Richfield Lake. Okay. That's that's good to know and, and thank you. I think um, probably just an ongoing conversation. I mean, I know we see flooding at Wood Lake too. So I think if, um, if as we're studying this design and what we're able to do, if we're able to not just maintain what is currently happening, but find ways to improve it in the process, if we're already doing some construction there, um, obviously that would be great. But I, I trust staff to be exploring those options. Yeah, so if you want, I can, we can talk about it in detail sometime. Um, <laughs> I don't mind doing that, but we're looking at our ground storage and things like that too, to hold the rate down. Okay, thank you. And then one other question or comment really, but just to, to build on um, kind of what um, engineer Bros was saying and um, council member Troutman, that I, I do think the proposed um, opening up of Pillsbury is the right move. Um, I also really think that setting up the medians to preclude going straight through, I think that is also the right move to address the residents' concerns. But I think uh, specifically one resident um, talked about the reason it was closed in the first place. And I think that was maybe an incomplete um, a just assessment of why, and I, I think to expand on why we are calling this an equity issue that um, historically it's it's not an accident that traffic was diverted in front of apartment buildings, which uh, given that there are, I, my count is 14 apartment buildings along that street, which is gonna have many more than 15 children um, I, there's children on, on every street and safety there is really important, but I think um, historically the inequitable thing that was done that we're trying to fix is that all of the traffic was diverted in front of the apartment buildings so that the single family homes could have quieter streets with cul-de-sacs. Um, so I, I think this is the right move and I, I also for a couple folks mentioned biking. I think overall this project is really great for a ton of reasons, but especially for 
um, bike and pedestrian use along this corridor. And uh, just would, I, I know it is not the same as, as having a cul-de-sac essentially, but um, to the, the residents who are worried about losing the ability to, to bike safely in the street with small children, um, just would point out that there will now be a stretch of, um, of bike trail that connects to, I appreciate a few residents in the open houses raised the need to connect that bike trail to those cul-de-sacs on Blaisdell and Wentworth. And so with that, you've got uh, an uninterrupted bike trail from Pillsbury to not quite all the way to Nicollet. There's one driveway there, but the, that's a great spot for, for kids to be biking that is a half block away from where they were before. So I think um, I sympathize with residents and I'm glad that we're working the medians to make sure they don't get cut through traffic but I, I do think that this is the, the right move. Any additional comments from council members? No? Okay. Oh, council member Troutman. Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just, to, just to share with uh, um, two, two, two equity issues. Um, one, I'll, I'll, um, just to, to piggyback on what uh, Council Member Whalen said, but also I just wanted to to, to thank uh, you, Jack Bros, and Director Asher, and our Transportation Commission for really making that sidewalk um, on the uh, portion of 65th Street that's um, west of uh, Lindale Avenue a priority. I know, um, and that's that's one of those areas that I've, I've become more aware of as a council member. Um, just how important um, Richfield Lake is for for residents that have trouble getting around that even places as beautiful as uh, Wood Lake um, is not necessarily accessible um, because of the gravel path um, that uh, Richfield Lake is accessible. But then for some of our older residents and residents that find it harder to get around there's no sidewalk, which if you're moving slow or you're moving more, you know, more difficult that 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 we're we're make we're gonna make that that area more accessible for more of our residents. So I wanted to say thank you uh, for that. And um, for for our our single family homeowners um, and our and our renters, we we do have a concentration of families on that street. And it's a privilege to be able to um, to to make that to make that equitable. And um, as somebody who lives on Humboldt Avenue that has um, we have a number of cars on our street. Um, our neighborhood is not destroyed. Um, and so for folks that that would say their neighborhood will be destroyed, I just wanna give you some encouragement. Um, it, I, it, 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 it will not be. Um, and so I know change, change is not easy um, and maybe cold comfort coming from a council member, but, um, but uh, appreciate uh, the good work that we've done, um, that you've done, uh, Mr. Bros, and uh, looking forward to supporting this. So, Madam Mayor, did you want to take this as two separate motions or one combined motion? Um, I will ask our city manager, Tijin. Do you have a recommendation or is there one way we need to go with this? Mayor, did you mean city attorney teacher? What did I just I, say? City manager? I'm sorry. City that's attorney. Okay. Sorry. I thought we were getting a promotion or something. <laughs> city attorney. Uh -huh. sorry. No, it one uh, just one motion would be perfectly acceptable, Mayor. Great, one motion it is. All right, so I will move to approve the preliminary design layout of 65th Street from Nicola Avenue to 66th Street slash Ray Drive, including the Lindale Avenue pedestrian improvements between 64th Street and 66th Street, as recommended by the Transportation Commission, and to approve the contract not to exceed $439,804 with Kimley Horn and Associates Incorporated for final design engineering of the 65th Street reconstruction project 
between Nicollet Avenue and 66th Street slash Ray Drive, including the Lindale Avenue pedestrian improvements between 64th Street and 66th Street. Council Member Whalen, I'll second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Are there any additional council comments? Council Member Supple. I just wanted to say thank you for the section along Lindale Avenue because it included some on street parking that the neighborhood's been asking for more parking in that area. There were also concerns about crossing Lindale in those areas and I think some of the suggestions are going to make that easier. I know there were some like feel like it's difficult to reach some of the cross signals if you're in a wheelchair and things like that. And so those design options I've heard from the community people are very happy with those changes. So I wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you. Any additional comments from Council? Nope. All right, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, can you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez? Aye. Councilmember Stoppel? Aye. Councilmember Trotman? Councilmember Garcia? Aye. Councilmember Whalen? Aye. Five ayes. The motions have been approved. The next item is consideration of the appointment to the planning commission opening um, for the planning commission opening. The planning commission has a midterm resignation. The city council held interviews of interested residents on July 11th, 2020 via WebEx. Following the interviews, council discussed thoughts and recommendations and the city council directed the city manager's office to conduct recruitment, seeking applicants to fill the vacancy. The recruitment included information on the city's website and social media platforms. Um, so as always, I'll just say one of the things I enjoy the most is getting to meet new residents and really hearing um, about the passion and interest that our residents have for serving the community. And we have such a diversity of folks that always apply. Um, and again, this process of interviewing folks for the planning commission was a pleasure again, um, and another opportunity to just learn about the exceptional leaders that we have in our city. And I'll just say um, in my decision making, I really looked at kind of the, the skills and strengths that we had on our planning commission now and the vision of the council and the city moving into the future um, because the planning commission does play a very important role in, in deciding what our community looks like far into the future. Um, and, you know, people's ability to really um, do things like get input from residents most impacted, but really be able to go out and seek in, um, input from our residents overall. We are looking for commissioners who are um, interested in really being more active in getting resident input. Um, we considered, you know, people's equity competencies and skill sets because as a council, that is one of our top priorities in ensuring that we have that skill set in our um, boards and commissions was is very important as well. Um, so I guess I'm sure there'll probably be other comments from council members, but I'll just make the motion and then we can second it and I can open it back up for council member comments. Um, I'll make the motion to appoint Brett Strusa a member um, as member to fill the vacant term on the planning commission and Brett is the former will be the former chair. She's the chair now of the human rights commission. So we'll Council Member Troutman, second. Great, thank you, Council Member Troutman. Um, Mayor Regan Gonzalez has made the motion and Council Member Troutman has seconded. Are there any additional comments or questions on this item from council members? Council members. Um, yes, I'll speak up. Oh, sorry, oh. Council Member Seppel, and then do you wanna go afterwards, Council Member Wheeler? All right, um, this is Council Member Seppel. Um, I just want to echo what you said. It was really great listening to all the people that we interviewed. We have 
a great deal of talent in Richfield, and it was really exciting to talk to everybody and hear all the different ideas. And so it, it's a good problem to have when it's hard to narrow down that selection. And I'm very confident that um, Brett will do a fantastic job. And thank you to everybody else that applied. Councilmember Whelan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I um, basically took the words right out of my mouth. I, I think Brett is going to be great for this. I'm excited to appoint her, but I, I also um, just want to say again, the, the other applicants were wonderful. I had a chance to talk with a few of them um, and hope to continue those conversations. Uh, I hope they continue to apply in the future as we have more commission vacancies that they also find um, other ways to plug in in Richfield. There's certainly no shortage of um, organizations in town doing good things who are looking for um, for people wanting to get involved. So um, thank you to everyone who steps up to, to play a role here. And um, I, I appreciate more and more, uh, certainly what um, Mayor Regan Gonzalez said about uh, wanting commission members who are outward facing and engaging their neighbors and bringing more voices to the conversation. Um, I'm hearing that more and more from our applicants and that's really exciting and I'm, uh, yeah, just honored to have so many people who want to jump into this vision, the shared vision of how we move forward as a community. Thank you, Councilmember Boylan. Councilmember Troutman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to to um, to say uh, to, to um, Brett Strusa, congratulations, and it was a pleasure uh, serving as a liaison on the kind of commission that she led, and appreciated her organizational skills and her leadership skills and her thoughtfulness and her thoroughness. And um, so I'm looking forward to her serving in this current role. And then for for everybody, it is it, it, it was who applied. We're grateful, um, and uh, especially for all our newer residents. There are there are a number of new residents that uh, had been in Richfield a year or or just a little bit more, and it was great to see them uh, want to be involved too. Um, so so thank you to everybody that applied. But I'm looking forward to uh, to working with uh, with Miss uh, Strusa in this role. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Suffol. Aye. Council Member Troutman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. Do we have five ayes? Thank you. The motion has been approved. The next item on the agenda is the city manager's report with city manager Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. I have a short report tonight. Um, as you all know, Governor Walls issued an executive order 20-81, um, and as of July 25th, um, the order went into place, and uh, folks need to wear masks. Um, they need to wear masks in all indoor businesses, any public space, including all city buildings. Um, we have uh, incorporated that into our preparedness plan for our staff. Um, and also, uh, you know, all of our buildings, we are asking people to wear masks. There are some exceptions. Um, you know, children under two years of age should not wear a mask. Children from two to five, um, it's encouraged, but not required. And um, for those folks that have a medical or health condition, uh, disability or mental health, developmental or behavioral needs that make it difficult to tolerate a mask. They have an exemption. Um, anyone that has trouble breathing um, and there's some others that apply to, um, you know, workplaces. There's very good frequently asked questions on the Minnesota Department of Health website. Um, folks can also call here if they have a question. Uh, I would just ask that people have some understanding out there, if you see people that are out without a mask on, it is possible that they have one of those exceptions. Um, and also some understanding for our staff. There are people that work long shifts with the public and they're having to wear a mask um, for the entire shift. And, and I know I've got mine and I'm getting used to it and I'm wearing it 
even when I'm alone in my office out of solidarity and it, it is it is an adjustment and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you city manager any comments or questions from council members on the city manager report. No, great. Um, and then the next item is claims in payroll, which goes to council member Garcia. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's been a long meeting. I've got to take my nebulizer treatment, so I'm just going to, um, uh, you know, that's it after I, I move claims and payroll. So I will move claims and payroll. Thank you, Councilmember Garcia. Supple second. Thank you. Claims and payroll has been moved by Council Member Garcia and seconded by Council Member Supple. Um, can you please take the roll call vote? Analyst Martinez Mina. Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. Have five eyes. Thank you. Claims and payroll has been moved. Thank you, Council Member Garcia, for joining us. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and I will exit at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Our last item is hats off to home hits, and I'll pass it to Council Member Whalen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few comments. Um, wanted to let people know our next uh, council meeting is actually going to be on Monday, August 10th. Um, because uh, Tuesday, August 11th is the primary. So I wanna encourage people to um, to vote in that. Make sure your voice is heard. Check out the, the voter services portion of our website um, for more information on how you can vote by mail, when you can vote early. Um, really trying to not, uh, to spread things out so everyone can vote safely. Um, and then also that there's there won't be a second council meeting in August. <laughs> Um, then wanted to say thank you to the, um, the city staff who, who listened. We had gotten many, uh, community, uh, requests that the Richfield police department manual, uh, all our policies be shared publicly online. Um, and that is now the case. Um, so thank you to everyone who worked on that. I know that's been in the works for a while. Um, and certainly if, if residents have questions now that they're seeing the policies, please continue to reach out um, to, to us or to staff. And then the last thing, just wanted to uh, lift up our uh, mini golf course at Veterans Park. Um, if you didn't see, uh, I know not everyone's on Facebook, I'm not sure where else it's been posted, but there is free mini golf for kids 11 and under on Wednesday evenings. <laughs> if you, um, to get a coupon there. So the the church youth group went um, and, and had a blast there. If you haven't been since it's been remodeled um, or reconstructed, uh, it's in it's in good shape and a fun course. Um, so would recommend that to people. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Council Member Supple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, First of all, I'd like to do some advertising because we're looking for census volunteers. So if you're interested in making phone calls to your neighbors, and we've got a list of people in Richfield that haven't um, filled out their census and you want to help them, encourage them to do so, we're going to be making calls on Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 and Sunday through Thursdays from 5 to 8. And if you're interested in being that friendly, helpful person that can help somebody fill out their census and get our numbers up, you can call analyst Martinez Gavinia, or you can email her. Her phone number is 612-861-9715. And so we're really looking for people to help make phone calls. Um, secondly, we got some good news about the Richfield Ice Arena. We've been working on there's been construction going on as they're switching over the refrigerant and it's coming to a close. So if all goes well, the first ice sheet should be ready to go on August 10th. And then a few days after that, the second ice sheet will be ready to go. So um, I think that's fabulous news and kudos to everyone involved with that. Um, because of the um, 
ongoing pandemic than night to unite that normally would have happened at the beginning of August is being postponed until October 6th. So um, just so you're aware that that is gonna be moving to a different time. And then finally, um, I've been hearing from a lot of people that they wanna know ways to get more involved and how um, like they can listen to commission meetings and things like that. So I would encourage you to check out our website if you're interested in like going to the Human Rights Commission and commenting or the Arts Commission and Transportation Commission. If you go on the website, it gives you details about when the meetings are and how you can participate. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be brief. Um, the, uh, some of the other uh, comments I had, hats off, uh, were already shared, but I will share a hats off uh, to our uh, fire department to our west, to the Dyna Fire Department. Um, so we were all glad that we have our fire chief with us, but in the Sun Current, they just had an incredible story about just how amazing both Chief Kiewicz's family was that immediately performed CPR, but um, especially the Dyna Fire Department um, that were timely in getting to our chief and um, got him, got them to, got him to a specialist in time. And so uh, hats off to a, the Dyna Fire Department. Uh, thanks guys. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. Um, and then I will just add to Council Member Seppel's census update and phone bank, but we do have requests in addition to helping out with shifts, um, calling our neighbors to make sure that folks are filling out their census. We are looking for shift managers. So these are folks um, that will really help us organize these shifts on, on Mondays um, and Fridays and Sundays. Well, there's multiple days and multiple hours that we're looking for, not only um, volunteers, but also we are looking for two shift managers. So um, they would be two folks that would be able to stay with us throughout the project. So it's not kind of like a one-time volunteer thing, but it's more ongoing while we are trying to encourage our neighbors to fill out the census. Um, and let's see here. So some of the things that we are looking for in our shift managers, is we need folks that are able to communicate with the team of volunteers that they'll be supporting about the importance of the census and the importance of making the phone calls and really encouraging folks to get out there and talk to their neighbors. Um, and then also distributing training documents, making sure that the volunteers are reviewing their materials um, before the, the team training. And then um, encouraging and supporting volunteers to sign up for shifts, giving them necessary reminders, following up with folks, and then um, just supporting volunteers again with any constructive feedback, making sure that we are really being successful in reaching out to our neighbors to fill out the census. We get one chance to do this every 10 years. And Richfield has been identified to have communities that are undercounted, and um, when that is the case, we all we all suffer, and we really do have lack of resources, infrastructure, um, support for the communities that need it the most, and that's our community. So, in terms of requirements for these volunteers, you need to have access to a telephone, so it can be mobile or landline, and an internet connected computer. Um, be able to read the training documents before the training sessions, and then share any feedback or concerns um, with our staff that um, are helping with this initiative. And then be available every Monday through Friday, one to four, and Sundays through Thursdays, five to eight. Um, so it is somewhat of a tall order and a big ask, but this is a perfect project for somebody who really has some time to commit and really wants to do something extremely impactful in our own community. We are looking for two shift managers. Um, so if you have any interest in that, I will just repeat, um, you can contact executive analyst Blanca Martinez Gavinia and her phone number 612-861-9701 or her email is bmgavina at richfieldmn.gov. And that is all I have. All right. Well, seeing as we have no other items, I will adjourn our city council meeting. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. <laughs>